wow, these women are so inspiring. <clears throat> In just over two years, we are going to celebrate, good grief, Shannon. <clears throat> just over two years, we're going to celebrate the centennial anniversary of something. And I have a slide here, but I'm going to see if there's anybody in the audience who knows what big thing we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of. Back there. Sorry? Women's suffrage, right? The 19th Amendment that granted all women in the United States the right to vote. I don't know about any of you, but it's really hard for me to believe that less than a hundred years ago, less than a hundred years ago, women were being arrested, they were being force-fed in prison, they were being mocked and ridiculed, and their characters were being impugned, all because they wanted to do something that we do all the time. They wanted to vote. And thanks to them, we can now. Um, it's really hard for me to believe that that was not even 100 years ago. But women in Utah were different. Women in Utah got the vote 50 years before women in the rest of the country got the vote. In 1870, women in Utah were given the right to vote by the territorial legislature, and they did. They voted, and they were the first fully enfranchised women in the United States to actually cast a vote. But it didn't stop there. They voted for 17 years, and then the federal government came in and took that right to vote away from them again. And for the next nine years, women and men in the state of Utah fought to get that right back. And they were successful, finally, in 1896, when, uh, when we became a state. They finally got the right to vote back, and this time it was enshrined in our state constitution, where it stands today. But women in Utah who did get their rights secured, they didn't just relax after that, they actually went around the country and they helped other suffrage leaders like Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, they helped them uh, secure those voting rights and fight for those rights for other women around the country. But voting, being the first to vote, that wasn't the only first for women in the state of Utah. We have this really, really cool heritage. Uh, there was another first. In the year we became a state, in 1896, uh, a guy named Angus Cannon, ran in, uh, he was running for the Utah State Senate. And Angus had a wife named Martha. Martha, Martha was a mother of two. She was a doctor. She was also Angus's fourth wife. They were polygamists. And, uh, and I can only imagine the conversation around the dinner table when, uh, when Martha let her husband know that she too was going to be running for the Utah State Senate <laughs> against him. <laughs> and she did, and she won. <laughs> That's right. And Martha deserves applause. Martha Hughes Cannon became the very first woman in the United States to be elected to any state senate. And I'm a state senator, so I'm really proud of Martha, even though I'm a Republican and she was a Democrat, but that's okay. I'm really proud of this. Uh, I'm proud of, of our heritage. In fact, I have this very photograph enlarged and another one like it, framed nicely and hanging in my office in the Utah State Capitol building to remind me of this wonderful heritage that we have and to remind me that not very long ago, these women and men helped fight for me to have a voice because really a vote is a, is a voice, uh, a legal voice for us. And, and these pictures remind me of that heritage and help me think to myself, you know, am I living up to this great legacy that we have been given? What am I doing with my voice? How am I actually using my voice to the very best of my abilities? And tonight I want to give you three principles that I use that really help me be able to find and use my voice. And I hope that they can help you too. The first one is to seek opportunities to learn and grow. And this is key, right? We don't get opportunities by just sitting around. In fact, Thomas Edison said, most people miss opportunities because it, they come dressed in overalls and look like hard work. And, 
as, as we seek opportunities and we seek them out, it, it's, it's something that really, um, really amazing things can happen. I got married young. I was very young when I got married. I had five babies in eight years, and I loved every minute of that, and I still do. A couple of my babies are here tonight. Um, but I didn't do anything really but wipe noses and bottoms for the first 13 years. And then when my youngest child uh, started preschool, I started really feeling like I needed to, to start seeking, seeking out what was really next for me in my life. And, and um, I started praying about it. And it, just a few months later, in January of 2008, I met Jason Chaffetz for the first time. And Jason was running against a sitting congressman, and he didn't have any money, and he didn't really have any name recognition, and I'd never heard of him before, but I liked the things he had to say. And I was a political junkie. I'd always voted, but I'd never actually been involved in politics before. But I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, help, I'm gonna help Jason. He needs, he needs help. So I volunteered to make some phone calls for him. And one thing led to another, and I ended up becoming his political director that year. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing. None of us really did. But we were figuring it out as we went along. And I was really grateful for the opportunity because I wasn't qualified at all to do the things that I was doing. But because he couldn't afford to pay a professional, he got me. And, <laughs> and, and uh, it was a great experience. And I worked that whole year for free. And I, and I thought, you know what? If I had known at the beginning of the year, beginning of January 2008, all of the time, the blood, sweat, and tears, and the effort that would have gone into this year after just volunteering to make some phone calls, I never would have done it. So I'm really, really glad I didn't know. <laughs> because I'm so glad that I did those things. It opened up doors for me that I didn't even know were there. Opportunities that I had never been able to have, I would have not have ever, ever been able to have. After he was elected in, in November of 2008, he asked me to be his campaign manager. He asked me this the day after he was elected. And I'd been working, you know, 12, 14 hour days, seven days a week for the past 11 months. And, uh, and I sat there in silence for a minute and he said, well, what, what's the matter? What, give me an answer. And I said, you know, Jason, this is like asking a woman if she wants to have another baby the day after she gives birth. <laughs> I need a few minutes. I need some time here. Um, but I did. I ended up becoming his campaign manager, and I ran his political operation literally out of my laundry room for the next three years, which helped prepare me um, for... Whoops, I'm going the wrong direction. Which helped prepare me uh, for uh, the next opportunity that I had um, that was... Uh, that I never... You know what? I wanted to be a ballerina when I was a little girl. I didn't ever want to grow up and be a stuffy politician. Um, but in January of 2008, I, uh, or sorry, in 2012, I actually, I ran for the Utah State Senate. That was an opportunity that came up. And this is the, the second point I want to make. Don't take counsel from your fears. These six words changed my life. When I was a freshman in college, um, Elder um, Elder Faust came down to BYU and he, he gave this speech and he said these words and they have stayed with me ever since. And they have been like a beacon to me. Every time I feel that twinge of fear over anything, I think of these words and, you know, there may be good reasons not to do something, but fear is never a good reason for me. And so I use, I use that uh, to, to kind of keep me on track, and when I feel that fear, I think twice, or three times, or sometimes four times. I was scared to run for the Utah State Senate. Uh, it was something that I had never expected to do, something that just, you know, was an opportunity that was presented to me. And because of the preparation from the four years before that, uh, I was prepared, sort of, you know, you still have to learn and, and grow and, and do a lot, but I, I was prepared to do it. Um, and I almost didn't, because I thought, well, what if I good grief, what if I lose? And what if, what if people don't like what I have to say? What if people ask me a question and I don't know the answer to it? These are the things that really terrified me, but I decided to go ahead and run, and I'm so grateful that I did. It's been a, a wonderful, oh my gosh, I'm going the wrong, there we go. Hello. Hi, I can, I can do hard things. So I did. I, I, I ran for the Senate and I won in 2012, and it's been a, just an absolute incredible experience. Um, and uh, I think sometimes when we are scared to do something, it's, it's because we're worried about failing. We're scared to fail. Um, and which leads me to my third, my third point here. Oh my gosh, I really cannot do this. I will keep my thumb where it needs to be. 
Okay, be brave enough to fail. This is the third point, if we're not confused enough as it is. Uh, notice the picture here. I'm running for Congress, and um, we'll, get, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but uh, sometimes, you know, we have to allow ourselves to do things that may potentially lead to failure. And if we don't do those things that may potentially lead to failure, we're not going to do anything, which really, truly is the greatest failure. We can't have any success in life without the possibility of failing. Um, 2012 wasn't actually the first time I ran for, for office. Um, I, I did uh, as a seventh grader uh, back in 18, uh, 19, yeah, 18, 1986. <laughs> Back in 1986, it feels like 1886, uh, <clears throat> I, I was a, an awkward, shy, introverted, very insecure, um, nerdy, unpopular seventh grade girl, so I decided to run for class officer. And <clears throat> um, I was too scared to campaign. I didn't want anyone to know I was running for, for office. Uh, but so my mother helped me. She's an artist, and she, she drew up campaign poster for me and it was really cute we photocopied it onto light pink paper and I taped it to the brick walls at my school um, and it, it was a picture of a fluffy rabbit and uh, I'm gonna get this right and it said um, no bunny would be better um, and I lost that race <laughs> now I'm not blaming my mother for my loss I'm not but I will say this, when I ran for the Senate in 2012, she did not make my campaign signs. <laughs> um, I, I, I know a guy who ran for city council once, and I say, don't take, be brave enough to fail, right? But that doesn't mean just go try stuff and throw yourself out there without any preparation or any, uh, any thought behind it at all. Um, I love the saying, luck happens when preparation meets opportunity. Uh, it takes preparation. And I, met, I know this guy who ran for city council once, and uh, he said, um, I said, well, how's, how's your race going? Are you out knocking on doors? Are you putting up signs? And he said, oh, no, 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 I'm not doing any of that stuff. I, I just, you know, if God wants me to be on the city council, then I will win. And if I don't win, then God has something different in store for me. And I thought, well, that's, you know, an interesting campaign strategy and uh, probably not a very successful one. And it really wasn't successful for him. He didn't win. Um, but, uh, but, you know, success, success is something that takes effort, but sometimes even our best efforts fail. And sometimes our greatest lessons that we learn in life are lessons that we learn from our failures. Uh, I'll go back now to this picture. I, I ran, speaking of failures, I ran for Congress this year. Um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't win, and thank you for not applauding there on that line. Um, but my old boss, Jason Chaffetz, you know, he, he dropped out, he resigned, and there was a special election, and I threw my hat in the ring, and I ran for that. And, I, and it was a great experience. I learned some great things. They were painful things that I learned, some of them. Um, but I learned that I, um, I, I learned that I can do hard things, like, like work this little thing here. I learned that I can forgive people who aren't very nice to me. Um, I learned that I uh, can take criticism. And most importantly, I learned that I have a lot of family and friends who uh, are very supportive and loving toward me even when I don't succeed at something. Whether or not I succeed or fail, they still love me and support me. And, and that was a great lesson to learn um, people ask me a lot, how do you do it all? Um, and I think Shannon, uh, you know, she can. But my, the short answer for me is, I, you know, I can't. I can't do it all. I don't do it all. Um, certainly not all at once. And um, the, this is Rosie. This is Ro Rosie to the rescue. And uh, this is uh, a, a, one of my favorite um, Norman Rockwell paintings. And I just, I so relate to Rosie because she's, you know, she's wearing all the hats and she's got all the gear and she's, you know, walking with purpose and she's rolling up her sleeves and she's going to go do everything, be all things to all people and, and save the world. And, and I love her for that. Um, 
But you know what? Sometimes we put too many expectations on ourselves. Nobody expects me to do everything, and nobody expects you to do everything. But sometimes we expect ourselves to do everything, and, and we lose opportunities to be in the moment. Um, sometimes I feel guilty when I'm doing a really good thing. I feel guilty that I'm not doing this other really good thing. And so it's important to remember to be in the moment. Um, I hope tonight, as you... Uh, listen to all of these fantastic women speak um, as you learn a little bit about our heritage and uh, our our vote that we got not too long ago, although women in Utah, we got it even, even further back than that. Um, but that's our voice, and I hope that uh, you can remember you to use it um, as, you, uh, as you seek opportunities to learn and grow. Uh, don't take counsel from your fears and be brave enough to fail. I hope that as you go and about trying to find and use your voice, you can remember these things and, and they can be somewhat helpful to you. Uh, thank you very much. And by the way, Tuesday is election day, okay? Don't forget to vote.